And then there are disciples like Matthew, who was a tax collector, a sinner. But Jesus called his name and told him to follow him. And we see that in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, he got up, left everything behind, and followed Jesus. Amen. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Ragini. I'm hoping and praying you all are keeping well. In today's video, I am going to share with you the word of God and the story of Matthew from this amazing book, which is written by Kyle Eidelman. It's called Follower, Becoming More Than Just a Fan of Jesus. I have other video that's related to this book and I will link it somewhere up here and down in the description box. So make sure to check it out. And in today's video, the title is An Invitation to Follow. An Invitation to Follow. Follow whom? God. Christ. Amen. So I'll read from this book. And there are so many, uh, um, there are so many amazing examples from the, the writer who is also a pastor. And there are also so many biblical truths which we can also apply in our life. Without applying the word of God in our life is basically just hearing it, just being a hearer but not doer. So I will start by reading this description and we'll discuss further about it. So it says, anyone, an open invitation, anyone, God desires anyone. God invites anyone in his kingdom. God chose Matthew, the tax collector, the sinner. People hated him, but God still chose Matthew. In the same manner, when we think that we have sinned or we are sinning, so God will never talk to us or he's upset, that is not true. Yes, God doesn't like sin, but he loves sinners. He always hanged out with the sinners, but he never sinned with them or like them. So in the first section, we identified where things stand in a relationship with Jesus. In this section, we will discover where he wants to take us when we decide to follow him. If you have your Bible, please go ahead and open the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 23. In this passage, Jesus clearly lays out his expectations of his followers. This verse defines the relationship Jesus wants to have. It spells out his terms so that we can know exactly what we are agreeing to when we make a decision to follow. Because there is a huge difference, as we spoke about this in my previous video, there is a huge difference between becoming a fan of Jesus or a follower of Jesus. Because a fan just admires. But when he has to make few changes according to the will and word of God, they feel agitated. But the follower will pick up their cross in every situation and will do what the word and will of God is. Amen. Anyone means everyone. God, Christ wants anyone. His invitation, his arms are open for anyone. It doesn't matter what race you are from, what culture you are from. He's the true living God who created you, who formed you and me since we were in the womb of our mother. In the New King James Version, Jesus begins his call to follow him with these two words. And we all have been through that journey when we sin or do something wrong against God or his will. We feel like, why will, why will God choose me? I felt the same. And I'm sure you have some stories and testimonies about the same thing. But God is a merciful, gracious God. He gave up his life on the cross for our sins. Most of us are hiding some stains. Our worst fear is that someone will flip the cushion over and discover what we have tried to hide. And the writer or the author goes over here with an example of his wife. Uh, she got a beautiful cushion and she didn't allow anybody to enter in that room because it was white and it could get dirty. But one of their daughters was quietly going in there and painting her nails where she ended up making a mess with a nail polish on the cushion. And she was trying to hide the stain so that the mother or dad doesn't see it because she was scared. But when the mother finally found out, she gathered the family and she asked who did this. And the daughter ran upstairs and she started crying. And the mother followed the daughter upstairs and say, no matter what you do, no matter how big your mistake is, I will always love you. Amen. In the same manner, no matter how many mistakes we have done or we're still doing, God desires us to follow him, to seek him, to go to him in our distress, in our depression, in our problems. He's willing to hold our hand. He's a gracious God. He's a God of grace, free gift. Amen. So 
most of us are hiding some stains. We, ha we all have our stains because we all fall short of glory of God. Our worst fear is that someone will flip the cushion over and discover what we have tried to hide. But because Jesus knows about our stains, his God, he sees us 24-7. We think that disqualifies us. When we are first introduced to Matthew, he has stopped trying long ago to hide his stains. They were, they were significant enough that it highly probable that his family and friends had written him off. At the very least, he was a massive disappointment to his parents. They had very different plans for his son. You know this because Matthew had another name, Levi, L-E-V-I. To be given that name meant that your parents expected you to serve the Lord. He was born in the family of Levi. And automatically, when you're born and brought up in that kind of family, to be given that name meant that your parents expected you to serve the Lord as Levites of the Old Testament did. From birth, he was set aside to a spiritual leader for the nation of Israel. Matthew's father, grandfather, and great-grandfather were likely all priests who served the Lord. By age 12, Matthew would have had the first five books of the Bible memorized, which is Torah. We learn from Matthew's story that he was born and brought up in a family of Levi, known to be the priests. And that's what their parents and grandparents want their grandkids to follow the same generational um, tradition of becoming a priest. But Matthew did completely off opposite thing and he became a tax collector. Whatever happened, we know that something had definitely gone wrong. Instead of serving the Lord, he decided to serve himself. He turned his back on his own people and became a tax collector for the Romans. Essentially, his job description was unfairly take money from his people and give it to the occupying Roman government. Even, even if he had collected taxes fairly, he was working for the enemy. But in those days, there was no such thing as honest tax collector. They would cheat the people to line their own pockets. A tax collector was seen as a religious and social outcast. He was ceremonially unclean. He wasn't even allowed into the outer court of the tabernacle because he was a tax collector. He was known to be unclean. His name had been scratched off the membership. And you and me, we have a lot in common with Matthew. Maybe you're not stealing money from your neighbors, but we all have, but we have all become disappointments. We haven't measured up. We haven't made the cut. The Bible says in Romans that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. We have said things we shouldn't have said. We have done things we wish we wouldn't have done. And as hard as we have scrubbed the stain, it just won't come out. And in the same manner, sometimes when we go through situations and problems and sins, we feel like what's the point of even trying to read the Bible or to call upon the name of the Lord? We all go through those moments every single day as a believer or unbeliever. But our Lord and Savior Jesus, who died on the cross for your and my sins and resurrected and is a soon coming King, He desires us to run to Him rather than to run behind money, professions, people or anything or anyone else.